loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Anybody got their ears on? Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. Man, oh man, what a beautiful week we're having up here in the mountains. Listen, tonight we're going to be going into the top three CB base antennas out there. That th These are my opinion. Obviously, you can go from mild to wild. In this video, I am sticking with dipole type antennas. I'm not talking about beam antennas because honestly, if we get into that level of antennas, well, you don't need my advice. This is for people looking to get their first CB base antenna or perhaps upgrading from something like the Saturn B100 to a real antenna. <laughs> what I mean? All right, so here's what we got. These antennas I picked are either antennas I've owned or antennas I've considered owning, and they are pretty, pretty decent for what they offer. The number one pick being way more expensive than the other two, uh, but probably for good reason. Everything I've ever heard about them says that they are the uh, premier pick. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with my number three pick and work my way up to my favorite or my uh, number one pick. And so for number three, I'm going to have to say that is going to be a tie. So my number three pick is actually a tie between the Tram 1498 and the Solarcon or old school Antron A99. These two are nearly identical. Solarcon, which used to be called Antron, I still refer to them as Antron A99s, is like the, it's, it's the antenna most people think of when they think of base stations, especially in the 80s and 90s. There was the Shakespeare Big Stick, which also was like Radio Shack's brand, and I had two of those over the years. Great antennas. I don't know that they're made any longer, but they did tend to have fiberglass failure uh, where the Antron just seems to hold up forever, the SolarCon. Now the Tram 1498 is a clone, let's be honest. Uh, they just took the design and I'm sure there's minor improvements here or there. But performance wise, I've never been able to tell a difference between one versus the other. It just appears the SolarCon A99 and here's a picture of the SolarCon A99 here. And here is a picture of the Tram 1498 here. Both of them are 18 foot antennas, making them half wave antennas. Both of them are antennas that you can add a ground plane kit to. And you'll notice that I didn't mention the ground plane kit in this number three pick because I don't know that there really is that much of a difference to warrant, you know, almost half the cost of the antenna for the kit. Now, I have a metal roof here above uh, where I'm at, and so maybe that's acting as a bit of a, a ground plane kit. But as long as the antenna is off the ground high enough, I feel like the ground plane kit is just not necessary. You can definitely chime in in the comments section and tell me that your before and after performance by adding a ground plane kit to either one of these radios really made, or antennas really made that much of a difference. But there you go. Both of them, and I'm going to give you prices, but again, we're living in the era of hyperinflation. So the prices that I looked up this morning are probably far less than the prices you're going to be able to find these for when you watch the video. That is not my fault, so please don't blame me for that and say, oh, you're outrageous, there's no way you can get it for that price. You could when I made this video. The Tram, oddly enough, being a clone of the SolarCon, goes for more money. I was able to find it. The cheapest price I found this morning for it was about $138. Now remember, if you're going to buy any base station antenna, your costs do not end with that. You're going to have to buy at least a 50-foot run of cabling, and you would want to get good quality cabling, so RG213, uh, RG8 is probably not good enough. Some people even run LMR400, which is kind of overkill, I think, but it's certainly out there. And so you're going to need that, but you're also going to need the, the mounting hardware, a pole, all that stuff and ground. Don't forget to ground any of the radios I'm talking about. If you're setting up your first base antenna, take a look through the back catalog here on Farpoint Farms and find out how I talk about some of the things you're going to have to consider. Grounding is crucial to avoid dangerous uh, you know, electrical strikes that could damage your equipment or possibly even burn down your home, which we definitely do not want to have happen. So you're going to need some ground wire, a ground rod, and uh, some clamps to make all that fit on these. So figure if you're going to install one of these number three base stations, you're looking at $160 to $175 easy, pr probably more like you know $190, honestly, with tax and shipping and everything. So just keep that in mind. All right, number two, we get another 
tie. And, and I know that, that you know, it's not top three, I guess it's top six, but honestly, these two, I feel, are also equal in most ways. And that is the uh, SolarCon Max 2000, which used to be called the Antron IMAX 2000. I currently run that as my primary antenna up here on the roof. And it is a 24 foot long antenna. It is a big antenna, but it performs really well. The equal to it that I have been able to find is the Mako V58 for about $60 more. So keep in mind these two antennas perform similarly from everything I've been able to determine. I've never owned the Mako, but in reviews online and talking with other people that have owned both or owned one or either, uh, they appear to be about the same. Now the Mako has the advantage of being an aluminum or metal antenna where the Max and the Antron and the, and the 1498 tram are all fiberglass antennas with a copper strand that goes down the center. Some people think, oh gosh, that's garbage. But a wire antenna is just as effective as any other piece of metal. The theory behind the Mako V58 being a better antenna is that there's no fiberglass insulation, there's no surround that wire so that it gets out better. I don't know if that actually matters or not, to be quite honest with you, but I can say that the performance of the Max 2000, uh, and from what I've read online, the performance of the Mako V58 appears to be one to two decibels better, and that's one to two S bars here, better on a CB radio than the Tram 1498 or the SolarCon A99. So with that, you're getting superior performance or a little bit better performance, but you're also paying more. And this has been the biggest change I think I've seen since I bought mine. I bought my SolarCon A99 and it cost less than $100 with free shipping. And that was only four years ago. The cheapest price I found with shipping for a SolarCon A99 uh, SolarCon Max 2000 was $173.99 and that was, uh, I think Newegg had that on, that was their cheapest price I was able to find. And that includes shipping. Now the Mako V58, it was almost, uh, not quite double that, but it was close to it. It was $259 with free shipping, so quite a step up. So those two are there for you to consider. Now the Mako comes, I believe, with a ground plane kit, or, or I believe it does, you'll have to correct me on that. But the SolarCon does not, and the V58 being all aluminum may or may not give you better performance. It also may or may not hold up better in high wind situations. Although here in the mountains of North Carolina, we get 80 to 100 mile gusts come down through the mountains occasionally. My Max 2000 is still hanging in there, what, three years later, almost four years later. I do not have a ground plane kit on it. I have never noticed a noticeable difference between a ground plane kit and no ground plane kit on any of the antennas that I've owned. So I choose not to run them at this point in life. Of course, I do have a steel roof, so that may affect that. I don't know. You can chime in in the comments and let me know your opinion on it. Okay, it is time to go in to the last antenna on this list, and it is definitely pricey. That is the Mako V5000. It is the premier dipole antenna and it is something that's on my wish list has been for many years and honestly will be for the rest of my life because I'm never going to invest this kind of time into an antenna or money which is time right so that is uh, the premier antenna it is a half wave I'm sorry it is a 24 foot antenna it does have a ground plane kit on it it is all aluminum and it is stout everyone that has talked about this antenna is very proud of it. They feel like it performs, outperforms the Max 2000 and the V58 and the SolarCon 899 and the Tram 1498. So it appears to have the best possible performance for an upright antenna. Anything larger than this, you get into beam antennas. And again, I'm not going to get into that because honestly, I have no experience with them other than playing with a little bit back in the 90s. But for overall performance, and here's a picture of it, this is what you're looking at, this is what you're getting. And of course, for this comes the price that goes along with it. But if you're interested in trying to talk worldwide, a really, really great antenna and a really, really great set of wiring to go with it is the place to start. You can throw a thousand watts down range, but if you're using uh, you know, a very small antenna, like I'm, gonna, I'm not making fun of this antenna, it's a great antenna, but the Tram B100, 
uh, or Saturn B100, the small, you know, I think it's 24, 36 inch, um, no ground plane needed base antenna. You could throw thousands of watts at it and not equal the performance of an 18 foot or a 24 foot antenna. And so if you add all that in and then you give it the quality that this Mako V5000 has in it, it is just a well-built product. People do not report it breaking in wind storms. People do not report it failing after years of use. It just seems to be a high quality product. You have that great antenna and even with four watts AM or 12 watts sideband uh, or AM or FM, I guess now, right? Um, you're going to be able to really put out some great signal and that is what's important when using CB as a hobby or being able to communicate with friends and family at range, at distance, right? So for that, you're going to pay dearly. The cheapest price I found this morning for the V5000 was $368. Ouch. And to be honest with you, I don't remember if that included shipping. I hope it did. I hope it did. But of course, you are getting the ground plane kit along with that, so maybe that's you know making up some of the difference there. But uh, things to think about. If it were me, if it were me based on all the prices alone, if I had to go back and throw away every antenna I ever owned and go with just one antenna, if I had to pick one out of all the ones we've talked about, it's easily the SolarCon A99. That antenna is going to give you the best bang for the buck. It's reliable, it's dependable, it puts out great performance, it has a low SWR, usually it does not need to be tuned out of the box. And my original one lasted 20, what's it been now, 23 years? Yeah, 23 years and it's still sitting on the roof and it's still hooked to the Lincoln 2 Plus here and it's still talking to the world. So I can vouch for the SolarCon, or in that case, Antron A99, as being the best overall of all the radios, or all the antennas we talked about tonight. Price-wise, good performance, 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 and durability, good durability. So there you go. I guess that will do it for tonight. I am super interested in hearing your thoughts, your top three antennas, or your number one pick for best antenna, including price now, right? We can always go with like, oh, I want to have a Cadillac. But no, I want to know the price. The price has to be a very big part of your best antenna choice because a lot of us, myself very much included, we just can't afford to go and buy, you know, a massive beam antenna and a rotor and a tower to go with it and all the rest. And if you're talking about trying to get people into the hobby, which both ham and CB are desperately in need of new blood, although CB has had a major, major resurgence these last two years, it's really cool to see, price is going to be a big point. Nobody wants to get into something they're not sure they're going to be interested in and drop tons of money to find out six months down the road. This isn't for me. I love to hear your comments. And that, my friends, is the end of tonight's video. Take care.